Looking at the COVID-19 situation in India, the country saw a global record one-day jump with more than 300,000 new infections today. As it reaches 16 million cases in total, India is also battling a new double mutant variant. Hospitals are struggling with an acute shortage of oxygen, with reports of some patients even dying outside the hospitals after being forced to wait because of a lack of beds. According to the Health Ministry, India has so far administered more than 132 million vaccine doses, but that only covers about 4.8% of its population. India correspondent Rohini Mohan is here with the latest. Rohini, what is the general public sentiment with the record numbers the country is seeing plus the double mutant variant? I think it's finally hit home for a lot of people that we are in the middle of a really severe second wave. Uh, because of the fall in cases since December, people had sort of started rejoicing. There were more weddings. Uh, there, there were elections in several states and there were big rallies and uh, mass gatherings. And when I went around to Tamil Nadu and Kerala to cover some of these, uh, it wasn't very uh, common to find masks even. Uh, people were sort of celebrating the end of the pandemic and it didn't help that a lot of politicians, uh, some people, if, some ministers even started rejoicing saying that uh, we have you know, defeated the pandemic. And it was just terrible and we are seeing the effects of that in the second wave. But it's finally hit home for, for a lot of people, the reality. And uh, when I went to hospitals this morning, uh, it's both uh, a relief to see a lot of people wearing masks and keeping social distance, but also heartbreaking to see a lot of people uh, bringing their families in auto rickshaws, on their bikes, in their cars, because ambulances are only for critical patients now. And so are hospitals. There are just no, uh, most hospitals have run out of beds. I'm in Bangalore in the south of India, which is doing relatively better than some of the worst of uh, cities like Delhi, the capital of India, and uh, Mumbai, which is in the state of Maharashtra, which is seeing the maximum number of cases. So just 10 states account for 80% of the cases in India. And uh, we have now reached more than 300,000 cases uh, on a single day on April 22nd. And this, is, this surge has been uh, has actually tripled in just 17 days and this has been this you can see it you can feel it all around us when we go out right rohini india's new cases were tapering off like you mentioned earlier on as well from december to as recent as last month but then a sharp spike happened you mentioned some factors as well uh, earlier on but were there other contributing factors as well there has been, as you said earlier, you mentioned the double mutant. There have been mutations in certain parts of uh, the state, which we're already seeing a lot of cases. Uh, and these mutations, the experts are saying, are more uh, uh, transmitted more easily and they uh, cause a more severe kind of COVID. Uh, we've also had in the last few months more people testing. Uh, and this has meant that the test loads are very high. And uh, for example, me and several others, when we tested, we got our results uh, three days later, our COVID tests. And during that time, people stop isolating uh, because they don't know they're waiting for the results. They don't isolate or maintain, uh, are not as careful as they would be if they got their positive results soon. So some of these cases, then the... Um, the double mutants, we still don't know, uh, mutations, we still don't know too much about it because the um, analysis that is happening is taking a lot of time. Uh, also, some information is not coming forth from the government. Uh, initially, they said that we shouldn't worry and there was only talk about the UK and Brazil strains, but we have some, and uh, you know, a lot of epidemiologists were very worried from the beginning with the right as cases were, even when the cases were tapering off, that uh, these mutations will cause uh, a surge. So these things, but as people say that it was the behavioral mistakes that actually really pushed the numbers forward. Uh, we had the Kummela, which is uh, actually supposed to happen next year, which the government decided to have this year, which the central government uh, under Narendra Modi, the prime minister, allowed to just happen. And uh, this actually had uh, you know, I, I think millions of people who are sadhus and uh, religious people on a pilgrimage all inside the river Ganga. Uh, we saw pictures, it was shocking. And this was happening when people were dying and hospital, uh, hospital beds were just running out. Uh, there were also political rallies in uh, four states at least and in West Bengal. And all of these states have shown immediately after the elections uh, a spike in numbers because of gatherings and also government finally releasing those numbers. 
Right. So, Rohini, in light of this uh, escalating situation, how can India bring the situation under control? What are the government's plans? Actually, about the government's plans, a lot of people are, have been criticizing that there hasn't been enough action. Some action that has happened is to curtail shortages. Oxygen is greatly depleting, especially in the national capital of Delhi. And there are hospitals that have actually gone to the high court, uh, to the Delhi High Court, saying that they are they have only three hours of oxygen left. And they really, really need supply. Oxygen supply is uh, kind of centralized in some ways in Delhi, and it has to get has to get oxygen from a, from really far away. So some of this is changing, uh, and you know, oxygen in the very last minute they refill the tankers. And if I'm sounding critical, it's because this is the mood across the country right now that uh, people have actually given up on um, government and taking matters into their own hands. There are volunteers, uh, NGOs, uh, and you know, just good Samaritans all across the country doing so much more, so much more than anyone would have ex expected. Um, and the government, in, uh, of course, experts and doctors are saying just maintain social distancing, wear masks, and people are taking it more seriously than ever now. Uh, wear PPEs whenever possible. Don't go out at all. Don't go to these large gatherings. Many, many of the state governments have imposed mild lockdowns. We had a lot of uh, a ter terrible economic impact when there was a lockdown and mobility restrictions and shops and factories were closed. So they're not going to that extent now because poverty and economic impact can also have a, a devastating effect on this country. So they are imposing lockdowns like night curfews, weekend curfews. Delhi is in a lockdown for some time, which means you can't move around. Uh, there's more police out there that is uh, implementing these. And then most of all, vaccination has been opened out from May 1st to everyone above 18 years old. Uh, there's, they're figuring out the modalities. It is still uh, for 400 rupees or 600 rupees in private hospitals and 400 rupees in government hospitals. People are criticizing this, saying it should be free because it will create an inequality and people who are poor will not be able to get these vaccines. But that is being ironed out. Uh, vaccinations seems to be uh, there is conversation around whether it will be effective against new the, the new strains and all of that but the main thing is to uh, is for most people to vaccinate themselves that is most important that doctors are saying policymakers are saying and also just follow the rules uh, that are wearing masks uh, maintain social distancing and just don't go out don't make travel plans Right. Well, thank you so much for the update, Rohini. Of course, do keep safe there. We've been speaking with the Straits Times' India correspondent, Rohini Mohan, who's in Bangalore.